lies were whore lies. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm your Thursday guy for Body Bags, and this week, I'm doing Altitude. It was made in 2010, and it's one of those kind of movies that were just made in that time where it's like, eh, kind of movie. You know, like Darkness Falls, Boogeyman, movies like those. It's not like that kind of movie, but you could definitely tell the style of it. It's kind of like, okay, you know, a teen movie. Anyways, I thought it was really interesting. All right, so the story is there's there's these five teens that are, like, I guess, a band. Or maybe four of them were a band and then, like, the main girl... Or maybe, like, they were gonna go... It's, it was kind of confusing on that part. I don't, well, not, like, it was confusing. I couldn't tell if they were in a band because some of them had guitars or if they were just going to a concert. Anyways, point is, they were gonna go to this place and they were gonna take a small plane, right? You know, five people, one of those small, you know, planes, right? Anyways, something bad happens with the plane and then they end up, you know, they keep going up. And then they end up in this weird, dark, black cloud. You know, this is during the day, so, you know, you know, white clouds. And then there's this big black cloud. And they fly into it, you know, an accident because, you know, their steering wheel is broken. And then weird stuff starts happening. So, I mean, when you watch the movie from the beginning to the end, it's really interesting. Because I'm about to spoil. Spoilers, all right? Because this movie is almost like time travel. Alright, so the very beginning of the movie shows this, like, family that's, like, you know, the this mom and dad and son and then two other people. And, like, they're in an airplane or something. Or it doesn't really specify what they're on, but, you know, later on you find out it was an airplane. And then there's another airplane that comes out of nowhere, hits them, and they get in a crash. And we find out that the boy is one of the main characters that's on the plane that, you know, is afraid of flying for good reason. Um, it's really weird because it's like, basically by the end of the movie, you find out that the boy, you know, his name is, I think, Bruce or something like that. And like, he has this kind of like power he can't control where like, if he's afraid of something, it happens. So like. It's, like, the very beginning of the movie, I guess, he saw, like, some magazine of, like, you know, airplanes crashing or whatever. He was afraid, and the next thing you know, an airplane crashes into him. It's like, oh, look at that. And he has this comic book that I guess he saw that he has that he saw and was just afraid of it happening, and it ends up, ends up happening. Almost verbatim to, um, to the comic book. And then by the end of the movie, he starts realizing his power, and then he ends up being in the plane that ends up hitting his plane at the beginning of the movie. So, I mean, like, the way it was, I guess, is that, you know, his feeling, he could, like, it's almost like he was, like, the boy from um that one Twilight Zone episode where he could, like, you know, more it was almost like playing God kind of thing. Where well, the boy could do this or that, you know, make people, like, a jukebox or whatever. I forgot. But it was almost like that, except he didn't know how to control it, and it was very based on his feelings. And it just kind of reminded me, it's like, imagine if, like, David Dunn from Unbreakable, you know, didn't, no, he started to realize he had superpowers and then, you know, died at the end of the movie. It's like, it was seriously like that, because, you know, spoiler alert, they died at the end of the movie. Um, because their, uh, plan lost fuel. Anyways, I mean... Is if it was kind of confusing because you don't understand what they're trying to make out for the movie. So, I mean, I think there's, like, two things I could think of of, like, how to make sense of the movie. It could be that the movie's kind of in, in a loop, right? Where, basically, kid gets a play crash, gets on a plane, like, 10, 15 years later, goes through hell, basically... And then basic, and then causes the, and then basically goes back in time and accidentally causes himself to go through, basically all that over and over and over again, and then finally they broke the cycle because you know at the end of this movie they see the plane and they're able to steer off and then you know the plane crash doesn't happen, and then you know, 
kind of think of it like the um, Call of Duty zombie storyline from World at War to Black Ops 4, you know, the Treyarch games, where basically the story was kind of like in a loop over and over and over again until finally main characters break the cycle. Um, and then, you know, and it was kind of like that. Or I guess another way you could just view it. Um, is that, I don't know, he could just change time or whatever, whenever. And it's like, uh, it's like if, you know, some, it's it's like if Marty McFly or some guy like that could like, you know, throughout his life, he can change everything or change time. Because, I mean, it feels like this character can basically play God but he ends up dying at the end of the movie. So, like, you know, he can't really go and just play God. And I thought that was really interesting that, like, oh, I got a superpower, and then he, I died. It's like, oh, that's great. Um, I thought the idea of the movie was interesting. I liked the whole time travel uh, thing. Um, there was some storyline things I didn't really like, or some, like, plot details or whatever you want to call it where like Bruce who's the boy from the beginning of the movie is dating a girl whose mom was the pilot that crashed that you know crashed their plane in the very beginning of the movie and it just doesn't make sense because he knows that and it's like I'm, I'm it's like it feels like this. it's like okay there's this girl whose mom basically killed my parents you know in his term in his terms right how about when I'm 50 how about like we marry at 20 and then when we're 50, I'm just going to go and be like, ha, I remember that time when your mom killed my parents? And it's like, what? And it's really weird. Some plot details were really weird. It felt like, and that's the thing that sucks about a lot of bad movies. It's like, they're great ideas. Like, oh my God, kind of ideas. But then they're just managed poorly. And it's just, by the end of the movie, I'll just like end it already because like, I don't want to watch it no more. Except, I mean, I like the idea of this movie, and if it comes for a full circle by the end, so I guess you could say that. So, I mean, I would probably rate this movie, like, I don't know, like a 7.5. I probably won't watch it again. I might, like, sometime later on if I actually bought the movie. I'm not going to watch it on Tubi, because I hate ads. I'd rather watch something on YouTube or Spotify or whatever. Um... I mean, it's definitely worth a watch, you know? Is it worth two watches? Uh, I don't know. If you like the movie, I guess. But, I don't know. Um, it just... The movie ended up feeling like the kind of movie that's like, Oh, great idea, but, you know... Mm. Budget was bad. Script was bad. You know, whatever. And in this movie, I mean... <clears throat> the scripts, you know... Uh, right... The script, you know, the music, uh, the acting. Uh. So I mean, overall, the movie itself was eh, but I love the idea of the movie, and I thought that was really good. Um, anyways, I'm Sam. I'm your Thursday guy for body bags. I rate the movie. Uh, I don't know. Final. I'll rate it seven point zero. I will see you next week.